If everything you are about to hear is a prefabricated plot of fictitious and incredulous lies, that can only mean one thing. It's time once again for the Mythwits, the show dedicated to all things geek pop culture, drenched in absurdity, and coated with sarcasm. Every week we bring on an industry guest to talk about the ever-expanding Geekoverse. We do our damnedest to be funny, but there are no guarantees. I'm your host, Peter Bryant. And joining me on this episode is my co-host, Mike Kafis. Hey, guess what? The Saints would have won the Super Bowl. <laughs> and joining us this week, uh, we are talking with Ben Radford. Hey there. Hey. Ben is a science-based investigator of weird things, including psychics and urban legends. He's written 10 books on, uh, on a wide variety of topics, including ghosts, evil clowns, and chupacabras. Chupacabras, right, Mike? That's how you pronounce that, right? Yeah, chupacabras. <laughs> he has <laughs> degrees in psychology and education and is a member of the American Folklore Society and is a co-founder and co-host of Squaring the Strange Podcast. Hey, he's a podcaster. Imagine that. And he won a Parsec Award, uh, something we've never done, for his show Monster Talk in 2012. Oh, good for him. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, this so is our year, Pete. We'll, this is our year. This is our year, right? You can do it, man. I got faith in you. Right. It's a year. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. So, hey, um, hey, hey, yeah. wait a minute. Because, see, that's what Ben sent us as far as uh, what, what you know, his, his very modest um, bio. However, I was combing through his his uh, website today. Oh, and I, hey, I, just, I was young. I needed the money. Let me... I, 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 I just <laughs> feel like I would be remiss if I didn't say that he's appeared on such little uh, other um, broadcast shows as Good Morning America. He's been on the Discovery, the History, the National Geographic, CNN, and as uh, I love to have what was written, many other three-letter uh, networks that uh, we haven't even heard of, that haven't even heard of our show, rather. So um, he's also served as a consultant for the MTV series, The Big Urban Myth Show, and as an, ep and as an episode of the CBS crime drama CSI. Uh, he's also appeared in many publications, including the Wall Street Journal, Wired, the New York Times, Vanity Fair, and other places. Freaking Roger Waters has quoted Ben, Okay. That, that, that is who we have on our show. I don't know how, Pete, uh, first of all, I don't know how you did it, but congratulations in tricking this guy to come on our show. Congratulations. Yeah, well, hey, hey, he has, he's not tricked by ghosts, and he's not tricked by <laughs> chupacabras, but this guy. But Nick Witt. Oh, it's Yo, a whole other. Freak out. <laughs> We're the ultimate cryptoids. Hey, hey Mike, exactly. remember that one? The old fake out. <laughs> yes. Right. Anyway. All right, Ben. Enough of us jabbering. Let's 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 get some of let's get some intelligent words in here. Um, you, you got the wrong guy on if you're looking for IQ words, but I'll, damn I'll it, do my best. He got us too. Uh -oh. All right, so let's let's talk about um, let's start with cryptids because cryptids are fun. I, everybody loves cryptids, uh, whether you're for them or not. Uh, like like you know, of course, Mike and I being skeptical in nature, we're yeah, not so much on the cryptid, but they're still really cool, and they're still yeah. a big part of, of my growing up. You know, like like Bigfoot and Loch Ness monster, all these things were, were big things when I was growing up. Um, so so what for anyone who doesn't know, for our fans that might not know, what is a cryptid? What what is that thing? That thing. What is this scripted thing you speak of, sir? Well, cryptids are basically sort of thought of as the um, the, the the cryptological mysteries. That is uh, the 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 marquee monsters uh, such as uh, Bigfoot, Chupacabra, Loch Ness monster, Jersey Devil. Basically, any animal that is either thought or said to exist uh, by some point by someone. And uh, you know, again, there's there's probably four or five marquee ones. Everyone's heard of Nessie. Everybody's heard of Bigfoot. Uh, Chupacabra's down the list, but there are dozens and dozens, if not hundreds, of lesser known ones. There's uh, Tahoe Tessie uh, in Lake Tahoe. There's uh, just, there's the goat man. There's the the, uh, the lizard man of Scape or Swamp. There's all sorts, yeah, there's, uh, there's all sorts of sort of, you know, uh, what would be considered D-list celebrity cryptids out there. And, uh, and I love these things, right? I, I, the thing that, that I'm, I mean, I, I, I investigate a whole bunch of things from ghosts to chupacabras, urban legends, you know, crop circles. But one thing about, about cryptids that especially interests me is that ostensibly these are real, right? That these are, we can go, we should be able to capture one and poke at it and feed it apples or, 
you know, uh, bugger it. Whatever, whatever it is we're doing, we, we could we mm-hmm. presumably be able to do these things. And so unlike ghosts, which, you know, you grab them and they're gone, unlike UFOs, which you, you see them and they're gone, in theory, the Loch Ness Monster and Chupacabras and Bigfoot and all these other things are actually out there living and breathing. We just haven't found them. So that's, that's what intrigues me. Yeah. So one of the things that, that I've noticed uh, when it comes to cryptids is that um, – you know, the, the there's always the chance that you can't see it. You know, like for for whatever reason, like they just they're elusive. We haven't seen it yet, and you know this this will hearken to some people's uh, a chance at, at believing it because there are creatures that did exist that people had talked about, but no one had really seen it in modern science. Found oh my god, there's still one of these alive, or or oh this right. must be the thing they were talking about, and they really do find some of these things sometimes. But when it comes to some of these, I mean, it's just that. It's you know you, you can't prove a negative, so you can't say well prove right. that it doesn't exist. You can't do that. That's just it's exactly. physically impossible to prove a negative. However, however, you can prove that there are a lack of things which will give you a strong evidence that it doesn't exist. I'll take one for example, and you can you're the expert, so you can correct me where I'm wrong. But I'm going to say uh, with Nessie, like like the Loch Ness monster, one of the big problems. And this is the kind of the one that sold me on. Yeah, you know what? Probably not a real thing. Was that for it to exist and be the size that it was claimed to be and live in the lock and have a sustainable population, there would have had to have been many more of them. You have to have, I don't know, what, a few hundred for a population, right? At least at least a few hundred, yeah. Right. So a few hundred of them that size, what are they eating? There's not enough food in the lock to feed them all. So that was one thing I was like, oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where, you know, there have there have been counterclaims about that. I, I, I know some of the things you're talking about. People say, well, there's not enough food in, in the in the loch. Um, and maybe it is, maybe there isn't. Again, it's, it's one of those things where where it's, it's you know, there there, there are animals in, in, in the lake, of course, and vegetation. So, again, it depends on, on what, what parameters you're using. If you believe that it's a, a herbivore, then you know, again, we, we we don't know. We we don't have one. We can't we can't we can't you know go to the zoo and watch it eat and figure out what it eats. But but you're exactly right, and you know, and that's especially true for things such as I mean, the, you know, the the argument that you just made is especially true for for lakes because of course, uh, in a lake, it's it's confined to that space, right? Um, there are some people that claim, well, there's these hidden, unknown, secret passages out to the oceans that they go through. <laughs> like, really, where are they? Well, they're alleged, right? We're, we're there could be, right? And so you right. have all these things. So if it, if it's if it's a monster like Ogopogo in La- in Lake Okanagan or Champ in Champlain or, or Nessie, then presumably they're confined to this this this. Now, now granted, these some of these are, are fairly deep, long lakes. But again, you still have finite space. But that argument falls even further afield when you look at something like Bigfoot, where you know, you know, the, the problem is not that we we we're not finding thousands of Bigfoot, and we should expect millions. Like that. So, as you mentioned, there's a breeding population issue, right? So in order for these things to exist, there has to be a mommy Bigfoot and daddy Bigfoot, and and so on, right? You you, you guys know the drill. Wait 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 wait. So what is it? Baby Bigfoot, do 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 do. Do do Baby Bigfoot, do 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 do. Exactly. Oh, God. But it's like, yeah. You know, but here's the thing, right? Is it? I mean, there would have to be. Uh, in estimates, are six to ten thousand Bigfoot in North America alone. So, in, in order for there to, again, as you mentioned, there's there are ecological and anatomical and zoological pressures on these animals, like like any other animals. And so, again, the 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 problem isn't that we're not finding hundreds of Bigfoot, or we're not finding dozens, of, we're not even finding one. So I believe they like to be called Big Feet. Big Feeders, yes, Big Bigfoots. <laughs> so, well, yeah, it's just one of those things where, you know, once you sort of start peeling back, you know, the, 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 the arguments, you start closely examining them, you're like, hold on, man, not sure about that. So here's another thing that I've I've read about and I, I, I find very compelling is that you have uh, you you have a huge uh, some of these really huge creatures like Nessie and 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 like other large animals that are purported to be around you know 150 200 feet long, right. and you have um, these animals um, and there's questions about well what is their lifespan I mean 
either an, an animal that's huge lives a short period of time that can move fast, or if it moves very slow, then it, it, it may live, you know, elephants can live for, you know, 80, well, I think it's like 60 to 80 years, yeah. and, and turtles can live hundreds of years. They move so slow. You would think that maybe we would have, like, you know, captured one on, I don't know, um, one of the many billions of um, cell phones that exist all around the world. That's, that's kind of what gets me. And, and, you know, when you talk about their metabolisms and, and well, <laughs> they got to eat, don't they? Well, what are they eating? Right. But they, and, I guess and, they're all just eating each other. That's why there's not a whole lot of them. You well, know what and, else and, you don't find? You don't find Bigfoot, Bigfoot poop. Well, yeah, you don't find scat. You don't, and, and even, even, I mean, the, the, the ultimate problem, of course, is that you don't have a body. Now you don't have a body. You don't even have skeletons. I mean, if you look at a, a lake such as, you know, again, Loch Ness or Okanagan or, or, or Champlain, what have you, is if there actually are these creatures in the lake, they got to die at some point. Mm. And there should be giant snake-like skeletons, or, or again, who knows? I mean, the descriptions vary, but we should be finding these these bones. Okay, okay, maybe maybe they say, oh well, you know, every time they look for it, they, they know you're looking for them somehow because they're psyching and they they run away. Okay, well, fine, but at some point, sooner or later, a bigfoot is going to get hit by a car or die of natural causes in a field somewhere, and a hiker is is gonna is gonna find this. At some point, Nessie is gonna is gonna die of old age, or rocks gonna hit him on the head, or some bagpipes gonna choke him. Who knows? <laughs> Um, and, and they're going to die. And so you have to ask yourself, well, where, where the hell are the bones? <laughs> where, where are these? And they're just not there. We should take all of our six pack plastics and just yeah. throw them into Lake Ness, you know, and, and Loch Ness. And then, you know, eventually, well, maybe we'll make really big rings and we'll choke yeah. one. We'll catch one. Right. That I've never heard that. You know, I've been, I, that's a unique idea. Um, it's, that's interesting. Or if you yeah, ask the people we, in San Francisco, we, we, we they would say throw the straws the lake, in there. And they will die on their own. Yeah. It's a, yeah. That's a very, uh, very mm -hmm. rough looking thing. Well, yeah, I like that. And big, they, they uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but like uh, at some point, fish type of, uh, fish type animals will, when they die, they will float before they'll drop again, right? In in a lot of cases, yeah, because the right. the, the, the gas will decompose and it brings right. its body. It's the same thing why why you know human bodies will float to the surface. Sure, and as we I have, well know, we have we have these uh, these these uh, shorelines all along, and not once has any as any of them lost. We got whales in oceans that wash ashore, dead whales. You know, uh, unfortunately, you know it's that's a little disturbing when you have these all these dead whales that wash ashore, but. It happens, and yet it does not happen. And with, it gets uh, better because sometimes they explode. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whoa! You don't want to be around when a, when a whale explodes, man. That's no, no, not even a sperm whale. And you certainly, <laughs> you certainly don't want to be around when they blow one up with dynamite. Oh, you've all seen that video, right? <laughs> whale chunks landing everywhere. Uh, awesome. Yeah. So, all right. So, what? Um. So we we know like so any kind of cryptid is you know cryptids are basically by definition they're they're animals that we don't have actual like hard proof for right otherwise it's an animal the, the, they are the, there is a, there is one aspect uh, some people consider out of place animals to be cryptids so for example uh, a uh, uh, black dogs uh, a guy named Mark Norman who does the folklore podcast he's written he did a book on black dog folklore or, or ABC's alien black cats so in these cases they're they are you know panthers or you know black dogs wherever else so it's not that the animal itself is unknown to science it's not a unicorn and it's not a dragon it's just in a place where you would not expect it to be so by some by some criterion those would be um, those would be cryptids, right? Right. And I, I hear in New York they have R O R O U S S S, right? Uh, rodents of unusual size. <laughs> in New York, it, that's that's where you heard. Yes, that's what I heard. Is, is that where you heard, Mike? Where did you hear? Actually, wait, no, actually, the the rodents of unusual size are here in Baltimore. Oh yeah, yeah that's true. Well, we also, we also now, have Chessy. You guys saw that documentary Chud, right? Where where was that? Mm -hmm. Where was that? That was in was that New York? Where was that? I think that was New York. It's it's an yeah. old it's an old uh, horror movie, Mike. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, I didn't. That and the alligators really in the sewers. Old old horror movie. All right, so Mike Mike has uh, what? Mike, you have a favorite. You you actually you picked a favorite that uh, of yours of of cryptids. What's your favorite? Okay, so 
mine is the the uh, New Jersey, the the Jersey Devil, yeah. and and I'm um Pete, I'm gonna I can't do that. Uh, I'm on the different wrong computer, so I don't know if um. So I'm just going to describe this thing, okay? And because I have it pulled up here on Wikipedia, uh, there's a really great picture of it. It it, it looks like like oh, sort of a horse back horse leg in the back end, and then imagine that it goes into like a dragon. It's got wings, and then like a horse's head. But I don't know, Ben. How would you describe that? That that it's I don't know if it's it's not even a horse snout. It's almost horse snout like, but it's it's something else. Yeah, so the Jersey Devil is, um, it's one of my favorites, actually. Um, See? I have, I have good taste. You do have good taste. In fact, uh, anything that flies, come on. Right, right, right. No, it's, uh, it, is, it is creepy as hell, and, uh, and it's definitely worth, worth checking out. So the Jersey Devil actually begins um, at, on a dark and stormy night, if you will. And the story goes that uh, that years ago in the Pine Barrens of New Jersey, um, there was a, uh, a a woman that was said to consort with the devil. And uh, and on a dark and stormy night, she uh, she gave birth to this this child, or was it? So uh, lightning flashing, all sorts of rain, and the midwife. So the, the she's giving birth. This again, she's she's rumored to be which to begin with. This 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 creature comes out this this deformed baby that all of a sudden has hooves and it lets out this ear piercing shriek and sprouts wings and flies out into the night into the pine barrens of New Jersey ne- never to be seen again until it was. <laughs> so this is the this is the story of the Jersey Devil um, and uh, it's a, it, it's a great story. Uh, and it, it, it was it basically began as an urban legend type thing um, and it, it later uh, what it happened is that is again it was this it allegedly happened hundreds of years ago um, and right around the time of Benjamin Franklin actually uh, oh. and then yeah it goes goes way back and so it was just this this legend of the era uh, and it, no, no one really took it seriously. No one actually thought it was actually a real thing until later on somebody said, hey, I can make some money off this. So all of a sudden you had people who were like hoaxing Jer- these, these Jersey Devils. Like I, I got one, like there was stories of like somebody got a kangaroo and, and, and taped wings on it. It's just this whole so, – so today you, you have – it's fascinating. So, you, so in modern times you actually have some people – not a lot. You have some people – claiming they actually saw the Jersey Devil. And it's this, if you look at this thing, it's, again, it's supposed to have the, 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 head, the, the head of a horse, has little bat-like wings, has cloven hoofs in the, in the tradition of folklore and, and Satan. Um, but if you look at it, there's no way it could be real. I mean, it, it, can't, it physically can't be a creature because, for example, the wings, they're these little tiny cartoon wings that are like, they're like, they're like this big. It's like, there's no way that it could actually get enough lift to this. So the, the whole thing is just absurd through and through. And, and yet, according to some TV shows, it is still seen to this day. There it is, Pete. Isolate that view. Yes. <laughs> there it is. Right, hold on. I mean, that's a, that's a handsome creature right there, isn't that's it? That's a beautiful I mean, boy right there. <laughs> that's a something. That's a something. God, it looks like a, God, it, kind of like a, Camel, horse camel bat thing. thing. It's got some cool shoes. Um, yeah, it's a tail that wouldn't really suffice to anything. Yeah, that that wouldn't even scare me if I saw that. Well, I don't. Depends on how big it was, you know. <laughs> right. If it's a couple inches high, then you're like, hey, get out of here. Yeah. I don't but know. you know. Yeah. But actually, uh, I, I, one of the reasons that's one of my favorite creatures that uh, a, uh, a friend of mine, Celestia Ward, who's a co-host on Squaring the Strange, she and I actually did, a, we created a puzzle a couple years back um, called Fold and Find. And it has all these different little creatures. And, you, and one, of the, one of the creatures, there's like Chupacabra, there's, there's Bigfoot, there's Kaboom. One of them is the Jersey Devil. And so we had this really cool illustration of the devil, and you sort of you have to fold the paper in certain ways, and it makes the puzzle, and you can read about it. So it's it's a fun thing. So uh, where can I go and get this uh, folding puzzle? Because I've been looking for it all day. <laughs> well, I I have a couple right here, but you can't get them yet. But uh, they are um, 
they're they're the they, um, they they actually just came out last year. We have there we have two versions. There's Monsters of the World and there's Scary Urban Legends. Uh, and uh, it, it's a it's a little project that we came up with, and um, uh, they're in a handful of places now. A couple bookstores uh, and and uh, places here and there. I think you can get them on the website. Um, we it's again it was just a fun little project that we we pulled together, and uh, we're hoping to do other versions as well. So. Okay. Is it good? Is it good for kids? Is it look? It look like a good thing for kids. Like you could color it in and stuff. Is it? Yeah, exactly. It's uh, it's this cool little thing. And so you've got you've got this little it's this map thing, and you sort of opens the door. It's like you know, following puzzle. And it's got this the door opens, and oh, then cool. it has it so it opens up, and then it turns into this this like map thing, huh. and yeah, it's really it's really pretty cool. So it has all the the kraken, rolling calf, chupacabra. So basically, it's it's a puzzle for kids and adults, and you can just uh, you you fold the paper in certain ways, um, and you 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 make them, and then you you learn about the uh, the folklore of each piece. So it's pretty cool. And then, like I said, we did the second edition. We did uh, Urban Legends. We did uh, uh, La Llorona. We did The Vanishing Hitchhiker. Um, uh, all you know, all sorts of scary urban legends. So it's a it's a fun pro project. So we we might be able to find that at Squaring the Strange website. You could, you could, okay. yes. Okay, I'll have to look for it there. Hey, Pete, I think yes. I just discovered what your favorite uh, cryptid would be. What's that? Uh, the uh, the Kraken baby. The Kraken. That's right, oh, the I Kraken. Like the Kraken. The Kraken's right. awesome. Yeah. That's your that's your favorite. The Kraken, and he's tasty. Yeah, um, he's very tasty. Release the Kraken. Yes. Yeah. I, I got to say, speaking of folklore and movies and and pop culture, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of the Pirates of the Caribbean films because you know I, the the whole you know Jack Sparrow thing gets old. But one cool thing they did that I love is in those films they really make use of of of. Uh, of cryptozoological folklore. So they got mermaids. They're actually the original mermaids. Like you have these Disney mermaids that are sort of cute. Ah, da, 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 da. The original mermaids will, will they'll rip your head off and, right. and shit down your throat. They are they are nasty, evil same with the fairies. They it's were like, the, they were associated with sirens, weren't they? Yeah, yes, yes. Okay, so you have yeah. sirens and you have mermaids. And so the original mermaids in, in some in some in some versions of folk tales, mm -hmm. they you know, they were they were drowned sailors. They're going out of their way to be mean and nasty, and that's one reason I really was intrigued when I saw the uh, the I think it was on Stranger Tides or something. And so you have this beautiful, alluring, you know, topless babe who all of a sudden is scary as hell. It's uh, and and the Kraken. The scenes of the Kraken are just uh, they're they're just awesome. So yeah yeah that was good yeah a lot of people don't realize that fairies uh back in the day fairies were scary things like you did not want to ever meet a fairy by any means they were terrifying yeah and and of course you know to this day a lot of people particularly in in the british isles uh they believe in fairies absolutely and they they won't say their names they're, they're called the wee folk or the or just right. the folk the good folk uh and it's believed that just saying the name fairy and talking about them will draw their ire uh, yeah, that's and, like Bloody Mary in America. We know exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, in um, oh, I think shit. in America, in American Gods, they did this thing where they, um, I think she, one of the characters, she used to set out uh, um, something for the leprechaun, for uh, the guy who plays the leprechaun, uh, uh, like a like a tribute to them every year or something yeah. to, for, to to keep them from messing with her. And then she came to America, and of course, I don't know if you guys are familiar with American Gods at all, but she brought the leprechaun with her because of her belief. That's that's right, and and you know leprechauns another one, and I did some research on leprechauns, and one thing that was because the leprechaun is a type of fairy, um, and oddly enough, and I could be mistaken, but I think this is right, all leprechauns are men. Oh, huh. they're they, they're 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 cobblers. They're the 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 leprechaun vocation is mm -hmm. making shoes. Um, so number one, they're men, and they're guys who make shoes. So. They're not bankers, or you know, they're they don't they don't they don't work for Pornhub. They just make shoes and 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 do magical things and and sit on gold every now and then. But it's a uh, it's a cool story. Now they have their their the girlfriends who... are leper. I'm sorry, their girlfriends are leper cats. <laughs> leper cats. <laughs> there you okay. go. I was gonna say the guys who the guys who run Pornhub do Pornhub do sit on pots of gold, but that doesn't make them leprechauns. Jeez, <laughs> oh, that's a whole other. Never mind. No, um, no, no. Um, let's see. Gold, so, hey, Mike, Mike, yes. gold sitting. 
Oh, so, so I just did this sideways. See, I, I should have known. Right. I was wondering, uh, do you find if the focus of the world's focus on cryptozoology as a whole is waning or um, is it losing some favor of maybe mm. some other things? Or, I mean, I'm just saying, you know, with, with having cell phones and with a growing number of like digital artists and people who are becoming more skilled at exposing these types of things, right. is, are people just like, eh, it's not even worth trying to stage a good hoax anymore because people are just going to, you know, they, they, I guess the squeeze, the aren't, you know, the juice isn't worth the squeeze for them. I'm just curious. What do you find? No, you, you raise a good question. I think that, um, I think that the, the public interest in cryptozoology has probably waned a little bit. Um, I think it's been eclipsed somewhat, especially in the last decade, by uh, ghosts. And that's due in large part to the TV show Ghost Hunters and all its billions of spinoffs, you know, Ghost Adventures, blah, blah, blah. And I think Ghost Hunters had 11 seasons of not finding ghosts. Um, but, um, but yeah, so I, I think that the, the public's interest in weird stuff has been sort of dominated uh, over the past, uh, again, decade, decade and a half. By by uh, by ghost stuff, but you know you, you don't need to go too far back to uh, the the 70s and 80s was really big in in, in Bigfoot, All right, um, well, and these things these things you know there's flaps right, and so there's there's interest in things. So you know these things never quite go away, um, and so I'm I'm expecting that probably in, in the coming years. Mm. Uh, but but you're right. At some point, people are saying, "What the hell, man? Bigfoot! People keep looking for Bigfoot. People keep not finding Bigfoot." Right. How, what, are we going to do another show on not finding Bigfoot? Well, you know, maybe they'll get that. Let's jump to ghosts really quick, though. Um, because, I mean, you could almost call ghosts sort of the, the uh, third dimension of cryptozoology. And, 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 I mean, one may, one, one group uh, right. <clears throat> that maybe is all, <clears throat> all bald here, one group may um, say that. And, um, you know, where, where is this going? Where is that going? I mean, other than just the exposure on television um, and you yourself being sort of a, um, a proclaimed ghost hunter, but sure. in, in, in the way that, you know, I think you're proud of your um, um, zero and 50 record or, you know, zero and whatever record of not finding ghosts. So sort of that's like your goal, right? So to, right. to not well, find one. Well, yeah. I mean, I, so my friends sort of joke, well, if you're such a good investigator, how can you found, haven't found the ghost? Well, I mean, it's like, you know, like, fair enough, in a way, if you're assuming that they're out there. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I try to keep an open mind about these things, whether it's ghosts or chupacabras or Bigfoot or anything mm -hmm. else, because these, these topics are fascinating, right? I mean, so yeah. I, my approach is, if these things are real, if Bigfoot is really out there, if the Loch Ness Monster is actually swimming around right now as we're talking, if, if people can actually predict the future and move things with their mind and all these sorts of things. Uh, if ghosts are real, then this is important. This right. is interesting. This is, this is fascinating shit. And we need to learn about it and figure out how does this work? How do we science need to understand these things? The problem is there's just not good evidence for them. And so then, then the question is, okay, well, why isn't there good evidence? So either these things don't exist and People and what people are doing is they're mistaking ordinary things for them. So they're they're looking at hoaxed photographs, like you mentioned earlier, and thinking, oh, this is oh, this is this is a hoax. Or if they're they're missing, you know, they they think that any any weird cold spot in a house is a ghost, or any any blob in a lake, you know, whatever. So either either these things don't exist, and people are manufacturing evidence for them, and we know that that happens sometimes, or these things really do exist. And whatever methods people are using to find ghosts, to find Bigfoot, to find these things, aren't working. Right. And this is the point that I've tried to explain to a lot of ghost hunters and, and Bigfoot hunters. And some people said, you know, I'm not, I'm not dumping on you for being interested in these things. I'm interested in these things. I think these things are cool, man. They were, these are big, hairy, unknown creatures out there doing weird things. This is cool. So I'm with you in that they're cool. I'm not with you in that. Do you see this tiny thing? That's a Bigfoot. Like, no, no, no. And whatever methods you're using, you know, you're, you're, you're going around with, you know, with cameras and, and infrared and EMF detectors, all these, all these gadgets, all these devices, all these things that you think are, 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 are you're using to investigate these things aren't working. 
they're just not they're self-evidently failing and yeah. i'm like guys if these things are real then you got to up your game to so you can find these things if they're not real then you need to recognize that and figure out where you're going wrong hey hey yep. pete yeah pete, you, you feel that you feel that there i felt it yeah that's ghost cold hey, that's what's that that's ghost cold right there <laughs> right right there that's, that's right. ghost cold you know what's what's wild to me is is that you know people will use that they'll say oh i picked it up on an em meter or, or infrared or whatever right but there's nowhere there's nothing that states that that's what that indicates they right. just make the assumption that oh i saw a change in this fancy electronic device that i don't understand at all right and that indicates a ghost like an like electromagnetic magnetic meter you know there are so many things that put off em emi um, I, I, I'm an engineer and, and I, we build prototypes and stuff and we have EMI creep into all kinds of stuff. It come, if, if there's power flowing through it, it's putting off EMI, especially if it's older and it's not, um, you know, not shielded or, or whatever. So if you're looking at a wall and there's no, say there's no light on that wall, there's no, there's no electricity that you can see and your EM meter starts to, to have some activity. There could be a wire in your wall going upstairs and that's the EM it's picking up. And if it's intermittent, it could be that it's some kind of device that goes on and off, like a ther like your thermostat kicks on, and all of a sudden, oh, did you see that spike? It's like, yeah, but that coincided with the furnace kicking on, but you didn't know that because right. it's downstairs and you you didn't hear it. And I'll give you another one. So so there's that, but then there's also you know people see weird stuff and it's hard to explain. And my family, Mike, I don't know if you seen this about my cousin Mark. He he lives in an old house built in the 1880s, right? Mm -hmm. And he. Uh, he, he swears there's a ghost in the house, and there's, he gives me all these things that he's seen. And I don't fight him on it because, you know, I love my cousin. I don't want to get into it. You know, I just I don't want to be that, that prick. Just, I just, let sleeping dogs lie, man. Right, right, right. I just nod and smile, right? And he knows I don't believe in it. We just don't fight about it. I just let it go. Um, but, like, for example, the other day he says, yeah, I was, in the, I was in the living room, and the light just came on. Now, I believe him that the light just came on. Mm -hmm. I also believe that that wiring is 100 years old. And right. that somebody walking down the hall could get the wiring to go on and off or get a, a loose switch, all, all kinds of reasons, you know. Well, you know, a big part of it is 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 what the, is people interpreting ambiguous stimuli and ambiguous things in the context of a haunting, right? And so, so it's interesting because if you look at what ghosts are on TV and in movies – there are these full-bodied apparitions that are jumping out of you from the dark and all these sorts of things like that. But in real life, if you interview people who actually claim to have, have experienced ghosts, it's little tiny things. It's mm -hmm. missing keys. It's hearing a, a voice that, you know, call to you and there's nobody there. It's, it's feeling a presence in a room. It's, you know, a, a light as you're going to sleep. It's these very mundane, ordinary things that for a lot of us, we wouldn't necessarily attribute that to being a ghost, but if you if you believe in ghosts and you believe that your house is haunted, then you 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 approach any any given information or effect or routes as well. Clearly, there's something weird going here because there's a ghost, and what is that? That must be a ghost. And so, you're exactly right. Yeah, yeah. So, I'll tell you, wait, real quick, Mike. I got one more. One more, real quick. So I was I was staying. Um, I was staying over his house one time. It's the same same place. So I'm staying over his house. He's talking about all this stuff. I'm like, okay, whatever. And and I did get a little creeped out by this, but because I have a skeptical brain and I was able to work the process, I figured out exactly what it was. I didn't just jump to any conclusions. I was laying in bed, and I'm in a different bed, different house, everything. Right, I'm laying there and I'm sleeping, and I woke up and I heard it sounded like somebody whispering. It really sounded like somebody whispering, right? And I'm like. Yeah, something like that. I couldn't tell what they were saying, but it was something. Red something, something. Red and, I could, and I could hear it, and it was clearly somebody talking. And I'm laying there, Ooh, and I'm listening, and I'm just like, I was just like, God, that is fucking freaky. What is that? I'm like, now I'm not gonna jump to it being a ghost talking to me because it, I I have never seen any reason to believe in any of that stuff. Um, but they do say the house is haunted. Let me let me let me run the paces. So I sat up, and it went away. And I'm like, hmm. that's weird. So I laid back down and I could hear it. And I'm like, and I kind of lift my head up and it would kind of go away. And I'm like, okay, that's creepy. That's really, that's even creepier, right? <laughs> right. So you, then, you, you, it's only getting worse, man. You right, can right. control the ghosts. Right. So <laughs> then I'm like, I'm like, all right, what is making noise? And there was a fan on, right? 
And when I sat up, all I could hear was a fan. But when I laid down, I could hear the. It was. It's just the way that the, the. It was the way the sound was bouncing around the room or whatever. Because I got up and I went and I turned the fan off and I laid back down and guess what? Silence that ghost boy. Silence him right that, out. Hey, hey, that ghost needed that fan. Right. <laughs> to clearly, to you. you're, clearly, you've not understood how this ghost works. Like right. no, but and that, that and you you just demonstrated a beautiful point about investigation is that. Is that you know I've solved a bunch of mysteries in my nearly two get two decades of doing this stuff, and it's not because I'm the smartest guy in the room, it's just because I'm stupid enough to spend more and more time on trying to solve these things, and 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 so often you see these it's unexplained, it's mysterious. That's because you haven't actually tried to investigate. It's because you're like, oh that's weird. Let me go look. Nope, can't quite figure anything. Nope, must be a mystery. It's right. like. No, man, you got it. You, 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 you have to actually investigate. And, um, and this is why I always laugh when I see these TV shows like the ghost hunters and they're out in some room and they're like, what was that? What was that? And they, they run away. It's like, no, you don't run away from it. You run to it. You, you right. go towards it. You turn on the effing lights so you can actually see something and you figure out what the hell the sound is. You don't, it just, I, uh... I mean, we all know how the upside down works now. So, yeah. Obviously, all the all they need are light bulbs, right? <laughs> I mean, and they would talk know. to us. Like, right. I don't understand. I don't understand why people are afraid of ghosts. Nobody's ever been hurt by a ghost. Like, why would you even be afraid? I, if if I saw a ghost, I think I would be. I mean, I'd be a little scared in that. Wow, what the hell is this, right? But I don't right. think I'd run off. I think I'd be like, wait a minute, I want to see more of this. I want to talk to this ghost. I got questions, you know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, you, you break out your notepad. Like, hey, this is cool. So where it's like, I, So, no, Mister Ghost. No. So, have you seen Scooby Doo? What's your opinion of it? All right. So, Spence actually has a question. Our our friend Spence in the room has said, "So, do you uh, look at EVPs?" And that would be for um, the people who are having trouble remembering uh, elect. Uh, what is the EVP? Electronic voice phenomenon. It's basically ghost. Okay. Voice. Gotcha. Gotcha. And uh, so she, she she's asking, "Have you ever, uh, I guess, researched any an EVP? And if so, have you looked in them at, on a spectral?" audio um she's a, she's a um an audio nerd so she's curious about what you found on those yes i have looked at evps i actually uh i have my, my most recent book is titled investigating ghost shameless plug here no not uh, a shameless plug at all <laughs> and yes i have an entire chapter on evps um it's by the way it's it's now recently available in audiobook it's my first audiobook i wow. narrated it in case you want to hear my voice drone on and on for hours but um, yes, uh, it's been a I whole. May pick it up. I still may pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> despite that, I, despite not because of. Thank you, sir. Right. You're welcome. Um, but no, I mean, I, I, part of the I, I'd written another book called uh, Scientific Paranormal Investigation in 2010, and it was basically in, in, investigating crop circles, psychics, Bigfoot, just a whole bunch of things. And then I realized that ghost, ghosts, and ghost investigation is such a deep field. There's the lots of angles into investigating ghosts that are really unique to ghosts. I mean, they, they're not really, I mean, some of the same investigative principles go across the board. Whatever you're investigating, you have to establish the claims, look for the evidence, that sort of thing. But for ghosts specifically, there's these deep dives. There's, you know, EVP, there's, there's uh, the psychology of the ghost experience. There's all sorts of stuff. So I have looked ex pretty extensively into EVPs, including, um, uh, what are known as um, as uh, ghost boxes, or for example, Frank's box, and these are these devices. Uh, Kenny Biddle has done lots of stuff on analyzing some of these some of these devices, and they're basically broken radios. And the idea is that they will sort of scan through uh, through through radio signals and and get little snippets, just really quick snippets um, of music, talk, commercials, what have you, and in this white noise. Uh, in this uh, otherwise static, you will, some people claim they can get messages out of it. So um, there's lots of, I mean, we could spend two hours just on EVP specifically, but. Uh, Is there a movie about using radios to speak to the dead? Yeah, white noise. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and also, I mean, there's actually an interesting uh, whole tradition of that. For example, you look at poltergeist, right? And you know, the little girl there here, right? So that, that is a really interesting symbol of, uh, again, uh, there's a couple interesting things about that. First of all, children are supposed to be especially susceptible uh, and open to ghosts. The idea is they're they're naive before the 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 mean evil skeptical world told them not to believe in ghosts. 
they, you know, so there, there's this whole idea that children and animals are more, uh, more uh, sensitive to ghosts in the first place. So that's why it's, it's, uh, it's, you know, the actress is a, is a young girl, Heather O'Rourke. Uh, but then there's also this notion of her, you know, literally getting the messages through static, through white noise. Um, so that, that whole scene in Poltergeist is really, is interesting and sort of symbolic on many levels of ghost investigation. Hmm. Very cool. Yeah. Right, and so, it's, I think, I think one of the things that ties into is that phenomenon called pareidolia, right? It, yeah. Uh, that's audio pareidolia. Right. And yeah. And so, yeah. So basically, you know, people, people, you know, we, our brains are hardwired to make sense of the world. And this is why we see faces in clouds. We see, you know, we see Homer Simpson in coffee stains. We see, abstract art we see we see things and 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 it's not just visual also it's also auditory and so our brains are continually trying to understand the world around us and our environment all the time and usually the brain works pretty well in some cases if it's ambiguous enough then people are they're interpreting whatever you want and so there i mean there's all sorts again i spend a whole chapter on that but the, one of the problems with evps is that you, you would, in order to really intelligibly understand what the ghost is saying, you'd need to know what language you're speaking, right? So if you speak English, as I do, uh, and as we do, then, you know, in theory, we could be talking to a ghost, not even know if they're speaking Esperanto or some other language we don't know. And so, so the, the, there's lots of logical assumptions that are built into EVP that really need to be questioned. I just realize that you're kind of screwed if you're a ghost and only know smoke signals as an Indian. <laughs> <laughs> right or sign language, or right? Sign language. Hey, yeah, ghost doing sign language. I don't have. Oh shit, I don't have any hands. Well, how do we do this? Well, I'm screwed. Hmm. The the orb is trying to make contact, except it was a deaf person in life. <laughs> oh my god, that that would make a great comedy bit. I like that. Yeah, I'll have to ask my deaf friends. I have a. I, I I'm a sign language interpreter by trade, actually. So I'll, okay, cool. And then I'll I'll ask them. But think of well they, they would i mean i i think they would just uh change their narrative to say what do you mean ghosts would have hands why wouldn't ghosts have hands right. and, and, and a lot of a lot of deaf people believe it or not what uh, this is a little known fact as an aside and then we'll move on is that deaf people when they dream they dream a lot of them don't dream in sign language they dream in like telepathy interesting yeah uh, i've, I've talked huh. to several people like that so not not all but there's right, a lot right. of them who do that sure a that lot of is deaf, super interesting yeah, yeah. A lot of deaf of deaf, um, you know, people who are um, people you would think, oh, well, why wouldn't they sign? That's their natural language. Don't know. Right. But uh, go with it. Right. All right. So I, we are we're running short on time and I want I have a couple of questions and I want to get to a couple of uh, I want to get to your game um, and I want to uh, we have got to hit this clothespin collection. So um, <laughs> I have a couple of general questions. Um, and uh, we'll get through these. I'll, I'll try to right? make them concise. Yeah, yeah, I won't ramble on like you did with the EVP answer. Excellent. Oh, you know what though? Spence deserved that. And we're not supposed to tell you what she does for a living, so <clears throat> don't okay. ask. Uh, do you do you find uh, that there are any uh, among different cultures? Because um, you've worked uh, all around the world, um, if I'm correct. So yeah. uh, working with various cultures, do you accept the, that there are certain cultures um, are greater or better with their abilities to uh, accept evidence and rational explanations to um, some X previously held um, belief or are, is it pretty much it, regardless, it, would, it wouldn't so much be the culture, it would be more just the, their understa a person's understanding of, of the physical world or is there a cultural component to it? Yeah, that's actually a really interesting question. Um, there's a couple answers to that. One is that um, I mean, it's not as if you know, you, you could break this down into so-called Western empiri em empiricism, mm -hmm. uh, that sort of thing, and Eastern, things like that. And that's, it's a little misleading because at the end of the day, science is science. Um, you know, science operates the same way wherever you are. If you're, a, if you're doing good science, you do a science experiment. If it's valid, it's valid in Brazil, it's valid in Russia, it's valid in Iceland. So science in that, in that respect is universal. If you're talking about different approaches to the world, that's where you get much more interesting in terms of cross-cultural beliefs. So, for example, uh, in sub-Saharan Africa, uh, belief in witchcraft is very strong. Um, it, it's very strong in many places around the world, but particularly in sub-Saharan Africa. And so what you find is that, uh, is that, is that people, because of the, the, the way that the culture is made up, uh, you get these witchcraft accusations and you get this, this sort of cultural suspicion of people who are successful. 
and they, in many cases, they, they're jealous and they believe, for example, that if, if one person is a really good, successful businessman or he's, he's done, you know, he, he does well for himself, there must be something going on. He, maybe he had a, a witch doctor cast something against his enemies or he, there's, there's, there's very much a strong belief in, in the role of luck and superstition, sure. magical thinking. So that is that, that varies from culture to culture. But in terms of, you know, you know empiricism, that's universal. I like it. Okay. I don't know if that answered your question, but that's what I, I got. It, it, it does. It does. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to piggyback on that with this next question. So uh, I think it's safe to say, Pete and uh, Ben, we all agree um, that it's, impossible, it's an impossible task to rationally talk someone out of a viewpoint or belief that they themselves did not arrive at in a rational manner. Uh, I mean, it's not, you know. It's very difficult. It's very difficult. So, uh, so it, with that said, though, what is what would you say is your best approach, or what would you suggest for anyone um, who is trying to even just plant the smallest, most remote seed of rational thought that just may begin to crack their um, incredulous veil? What 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 type of method sure. do you think you would try and use? Sure, there's a couple answers. One of them is that um, be respectful. Um, respect the people, respect the eyewitnesses, respect people who, who may not believe what you believe. And as an investigator, I do this all the time. I, I interview people who are sure that miracles exist and they experience a miracle. I interview people all the time who believe in psychic powers, who believe in this and believe in that. And it's not that I don't believe in that. I just, I'm, I'm open to it, but I, I have a lot of experience in researching in firsthand. So, so I, I'm not coming at it from the same, same point of view. But it's important to go to where they are. So, for example, if I go to if, if I go to a ghost investigation, or someone comes to me and says that they're they're wanting my help. Uh, for example, um, a couple of times a year, I'll get someone emailing me because they want help because they they believe they've been cursed, and they it's either the evil eye or a psychic or something, and they're coming to me because they sincerely are afraid they have a a literal curse on them, and they're and they want my help with it. So it's not going to do me any good to say, well, that's ridiculous. Curses don't exist. You're crazy. Right. Because that's not going to help them. So what I try to do is, okay, well, help me understand why you think you're cursed. G give, me, give me some explanation. Give me some whatever else. And when you try to break it down, say, look, I'm, I'm on your side. I'm not, I'm not laughing at you. I'm not mocking you. I'm sincerely trying to understand what you, what you experienced and why you think it's cursed. And, and at that point, then we can sort of say, okay, well, maybe this part of your belief maybe this isn't really quite right. Or maybe, maybe you're mistaking this. Maybe it's just ordinary bad luck. I mean, yeah, you had a flat tire. I had a flat tire two weeks ago. It doesn't mean you're cursed. There's things like that. So part of the answer is. Hey, had a flat tire last week, but okay. Yeah, sure. I get it. <laughs> you know, well, like, but no, part of it is, is be sympathetic, be respectful, be diplomatic and try to work with them uh, and not, not, not sort of against them. So, you, you know, try to understand what's going on. And, and, and again, just sort of that, that's really the main thing is, is trying to approach it from their point of view. And I think part of the reason that I did that is, as you mentioned, I, I have a background in psychology. And so I'm very familiar with the ways in which not only can we fool ourselves, but we can be fooled by things around us. And so we all make mistakes. We all misunderstand things. Um, and just in some cases, pe people's misunderstandings lead to, uh, false beliefs about ghosts or miracles or, or curses. I like it. And uh, so here's, here's what I, I, I want to ask this one last question. And then what I want to do is I want to, um, before we move on, I want to ask you this because there, there is still um, a lot of, a, a lot of stuff that we would love to, to talk about, <laughs> including the clothespin. Collection. I'll come back on another time. But, but yeah. We want to, I would love to have you back on. Cause I want to, I want to give some time and talk about um, clicker clatter and, and um, you know, your animated short films and, um, and stuff and cover the game. So well, how about we will answer this one last question, move on to the game and we'll definitely, we're going to guys, we're going to have Ben back on. We're going to cover Cause my mother who was a, a fan of the show, she's been here since the beginning. Um, she's, she watches our show religiously every week. Um, and she is a, um, and I say this with the most affectionate love. She's a true believer uh, where she believes in a lot of, you know, a lot of things. And she and I have very respectful discussions back and forth. And uh, I asked her if she wanted to pick something to, to bring to you, but she got me some information a little bit late in the day about crop circles. She and I had talked about crop circles before. And I said, sure. well, mom, find me your best evidence uh, and I can bring it to Ben and we can sort of just talk about some of the newer things and, and maybe, you know, yeah. we can talk. so we'll, we'll address that mom next time. Um, and, uh, we're going to do that. So, because okay. we have had, to, I, I don't know about you, Pete, but I've had a ball. 
Yeah, it's been great. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, so here's this question. <clears throat> so, and this is, this, this came up and I was doing some review, some um, research today and you've had some very successful TV appearances. And we're talking about like, um, you know, we're sort of hashtag the token skeptic sort of thing where I was like, <laughs> Oh my God, he's, he's on the Oprah Winfrey <laughs> network. And I was right. just like, Oh God, how, oh. You know, oh, oh, hold on Pete. No, it, <laughs> I'll, I'll send you this video. No, he, he, he had a successful appearance on, on own, um, surprisingly positive. Um, uh, it was actually a, a show, uh, su again, surprisingly, that they were actually looking to um, uh, uh, solve mysteries. And, right. and not in the, does it, you know, does it exist? Who knows? Who knows? Right. We're going to tell you for 45 minutes no. that it does exist. And here's a skeptic for 20 right. seconds saying it doesn't. Yeah. You decide. That right. wasn't what that show was, and I would love to. I, I'm, I'm thinking about catching that show because uh, he, you know, uh, she, she, she had you on. You were very credible. She was credible. It was an am again an amazing uh, display of, uh, of of something you would, <laughs> you would really see. Because Pete, like you, your 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 uh, your face said it all. Okay, so, but you've also been on shows like Coast to Coast, uh, one of my mother's favorites. <clears throat> and uh, you know, in, in 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 essence, that would be like going into an interview into the lion's den because yeah. you know what you know what you're expecting when you go into a show like that. And I'm I'm just wondering, um, uh, knowing that you're there to be minimalized and wrongly, you know, sort of uh, discredited. Well, what is your choice to go on? Why why still go on and why do it? Well, yeah, another great question. I mean, that's always, that's one of the sort of classic debates in skepticism, right? Is because what do you do, right? So you've got some show and you're pretty sure it's bullshit. And on the other hand, they're calling a skeptic. And so, you know, it's, what do you do, right? So if, if you say no, and I, I've turned down a lot of TV shows, as you said, you don't understand. If they say no, that's fine. But oftentimes they won't have any skeptic on at all. Mm -hmm. So you say, okay, well, so is it better to have, a skeptic who's on for two minutes at the end, or is it better to just have them go without a skeptic? And usually the answer is, well, go there and do your, do your best to, to, to do that. And so one of the things I've done is, uh, as I've done more and more TV, is I've been careful in how I answer questions, so I make it hard to edit out my answers. Sure, sure. And so I, I know, like, if I'm, if I'm going to, if I'm going to answer a question, I will, I will, I will say it in a way on camera that I know will be hard for the editor to, to cut it up and make it sound like I'm saying the opposite. Um, but you know, it really depends. I mean, so in some cases, uh, I've been pleasantly surprised by some of the TV shows. There was a series called, is it real on, I think it was the, the discovery channel. And mm -hmm. I was on like four or five episodes and that was a really good show. It was very skeptical, very credible. It was national, it was national geographic was mm -hmm. what it was. It was, is it real? I think it ran for like two seasons. And that is a really good example of, you know, intelligent skepticism that, that's really out there. And other times, like you said, you know, I go on there, I, I know I'm going to be challenged and, you know, and, and that's fine. I mean, I, I actually, I enjoy debate. I enjoy discussions as long as everybody's respectful. I will, I, I will sit down with anybody. In fact, uh, a couple years back at Dragon Con, probably maybe 10, 12 years ago, I was supposed to be on a, on a, on a debate panel with the Ghost Hunters. Mm -hmm. And a friend of mine, Derek Colanuno, uh, who was uh, head of the, the skeptic track at DragonCon, he had arranged it. Um, and he's like, "Will you sit down and have a debate with the Ghost Hunters?" I'm like, "Absolutely, man. Let's let's sit down. Well, I, I know my stuff. They know their stuff. We can hash it out." And uh, it was all working out. Then all of a sudden, well, scheduling problems and <laughs> right. yeah, oh, God, right. whatever, I, I, dude. I, I think I remember that. I think You're, I do I think too. I think yeah. we were looking forward to it. It didn't happen or something. Mm -hmm. Is that right? It, it didn't happen at all, right? Well, it, it, didn't did, it didn't happen at all. Oh. And, and, you know, and, you know, Derek was going to pull it together. And I, yeah. I don't know the whole story, but I, I do know that at one point I was going to debate the ghost hunters and I was ready to go. And well, all of a sudden scheduling conflicts or, you know, yeah. somebody, uh, someone yeah. stubbed his toe. I don't yeah. know. Yep. They ghosted you. Right, right. I would have to agree with you personally, and I would say that uh, based on what you were saying, um, be, be, be someone rather than no one, rather than no, no representation there at all, and, and sort of speaking to what your previous um, answer to the previous question was, was still be, to be respectful. Uh, I like your idea of you know, saying things so that it, it isn't easily editable, but also... Um, if you're able to say at least something to yeah. 
again, plant that little seed of doubt that might crack someone's veil. Yeah, and, and you know, part of it is, is know your strongest arguments. And so, for example, you know, if I'm being interviewed about ghosts or Bigfoot over else, I know my stuff. I'm not, I'm not bragging. I just still have been doing this for a long time. And so rather than give them, you know, a couple weaker arguments, um, go for the big stuff. All right, well, where's the bodies? Right. Where's the body? That's that's a valid question. That's a sincere right. question. You're like, you know, you know, there 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 can't be one of them. There has to be thousands of them. Where are they? Like, oh yeah, right. So you you can go. You can say, well, you know, I have to say that you know, if you look very closely at all the different prints, there's one of them. That, like, no, <laughs> yeah, just drop it, man. Go know your stuff. Go for the big points and uh, and and try to get it out there. And maybe you'll 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 plant that seed of skepticism, and someone will say, "Yeah, you know, what about that?" And I also think it's really important to to try and where you're trying to get to the truth, not trying to win the argument. Because right. if you're just trying to win the argument, it comes across as if you're not you're not being genuine. And and we are. I mean, I try to explain to people all the time about you know, the whole idea behind skepticism, you know, and they'll say, oh, well, you just doubt this stuff. Like, no, I know that that's not that's not true. It's not that I I am against anything being supernatural or, or odd or, you know, or or against what we already know. I'm all for I'm a, I, I love science, man. That's what science is, is finding right. this stuff out. Um, I just don't see any evidence for it. You know, I, I start what they call the null hypothesis. I start as it doesn't exist. Now, where's the evidence that it could, you know, like tigers, you can see a tiger, you can see tiger poop. You can, you know, tigers actually eat people. It happens. Uh, they're in <laughs> zoos, right? So there, there's right. all my proof and like, okay, so tigers exist. And then, well, Bigfoot. Okay. So Bigfoot doesn't exist. And then that's it. it that's kind of right. where the argument like, stops because there's nothing to... There's no right. reason. We, right. To no, you're exactly right, and that and that comes back to one of the one of the common complaints about uh, that the, a lot of the believers have, like, well, you know, a scientist just just won't look at our evidence. No, that's bullshit. Scientists will look at your evidence. I know for that for a fact. A, a friend of mine, Todd Disatel, uh, he did DNA research on 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 Bigfoot and on chupacabras for my chupacabra book. He is a he's an actual working scientist, and he is willing to look at your evidence. Uh, Sharon Hills talked about this. Those people as well. So. It, it, the the problem is not that there's all this evidence that scientists won't look at. The problem is that there's all this shitty evidence that is not worth that. that you bring it to science, they're like, "What is this? This is you're showing me a photograph." No, I need I need something hard evidence. Like, well, yeah, but here's another photograph. Like, no, 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 no. Three photographs is no better than one photograph. Give me right. bones. Give me teeth. Give me give me DNA results. Give me hair. Give me give me give me something other than. You know, my cousin saw something, and he sure it was a Bigfoot. Right. Mm -hmm. All right, Pete. What? Yes, uh, uh, we're we're going to make an executive call here. We still want to yeah. fit the game in. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. All it's right. not a long uh, one, is it, Mike? Can you do? It, can you do it quick, Mike? I, I believe so. I mean, listen, okay. I have a feeling he's going to hand you your ass on a platter. So. All right, that's fine. I need uh, my ass handed to me. So. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> So, uh, all right, I'm going to explain this right before we start. So just uh, cue, <clears throat> Peter, cue the music, please. There you go, Mikey. All right, it is time once again for Game Time with the Mythwits. I'm Mike Capus, and I'll be your game master. And this week we're playing World Cryptozoology or World Geography. I will read for you the name of either a documented cryptid of the world or, in some cases, an even less documented city in the world. <laughs> you, using nothing but your lifetime of cryptozoological investigation research, must, Peter, tell me <clears throat> if the soon-to-be aforementioned item is a city or a cryptid. Okay. Are we ready? I yes. Ready. All right. So, uh, you know, my, my girlfriend... Uh, Jenny, who uh, had to go to bed early tonight, she wasn't feeling well, but she helped me come up with this game. We were we were just running through, you know, a couple of uh, things online. Was, oh, that sounds good. That sounds good. This is and better then, than Jeopardy, man. I love this. Let's do this. And 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 then then as as I'm doing more research, and I'm like, oh god, he's gonna know that one. He's gonna know that. I had to go back and try and dig real deep, just to, on the off chance that maybe I give Pete a, fight, a fighting chance. But that said. <laughs> All that right. said, and Pete, I don't have the score up. You're going to be able to keep I got the score. It. All I'm right. On. All right. Awesome. Here we go. We're going to just jump right in. Ben, um, you are going to go first. 
Okay. And Ben, yours, your cryptozoology or world geography is Mam Lambo. Mam Lambo. Lambo. I'm, I'm gonna read, let, me, let me read the description. Okay. Described as a large snake like creature, in 1997, African newspapers reported sightings of a giant reptile monster near a river in South Africa. Mam Lambo. Mam Lambo. I mean, it yeah. might be called, in Baltimore, we would say Mam Lambo. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> well, Mam Lambo does sound. Was? Hmm? It, it does sound like a South African word. I'll grant you that. Um, Oh, uh, could also be a South African town. It could be a town, right? Um, I'm gonna go with town. All right. Uh, by saying Mom Lambo was a town, you would be incorrect, sir. Oh, damn! You think Peter? I'm hold my hand in shame. Chance. All right. Okay. Now, uh, <clears throat> now see the ones that I know that you would know. Not that this one definitely is, okay, first of all, um, Ben. So, you know, watch, watch your face because Pete, is a, he, he's, a, he's a shrewd player. He will watch. He is. I can tell. I, can, I, I see all that right. on his mug there. Yeah. All right. So, Pete, your cryptozoolo- cryptozoology or geography is Opo Go. Opo Pogo. Opo Pogo. Opo Pogo. This, this is Canada's most famous type of water monster. Not not a not a Pokemon, but it's a water monster. <laughs> the inhabitants of Lake Okanagan or Okanagan, I don't know, uh, in the south central interior of British Columbia. Opo, Ogo Pogo. Did you just you just told me it was a creature? Yes, every one of these I'm telling you was a creature. You okay. must say, are, am I full of shit? Or oh, gotcha. Tracking. Okay. Where is it from? Uh, British Columbia. Lake Oganagan. Okanagan. Okanagan. We're like, Okanagan. Okanagan. All right, so I, I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to say that it's a cryptozoological creature. And if you did say that, you would be correct, sir. Nice. Good job. Right. That sounds like a a North Indian name for like a North, like a like a Northern North uh, uh, Native American name. I actually investigated Ogopogo uh, for the National Geographic Channel, actually. Yeah. Wow. Some of these I knew like they were going to be Ben's. I was like, (laughs) oh, I know Ben knows this, but Pete probably (laughs) wouldn't. Okay. I had to switch. (laughs) Okay, Ben. Yes, sir. Yours is Miri. Miri, M-I-R-I, Miri. Okay. Sri Lanka has a unique cryptoid that is the only one reported as having four arms and two legs. Miri. Is that a actually a city or is that a cryptological? Or a, yeah. Miri. Miri, I have not heard of this one. Sri Lanka. Uh, I'm going to say it's a city. And if you did say it was a city, you would have broken through my veil of bullshit because it isn't actually. Miri is a coastal city on the northeastern seawalk of Malaysia. The city covers an area of 385 square miles with a population of 358,020. I'm batting, batting 500. I'll take that. It's all right. You just wait, Pete. Pete's about to bat 500. Here we go, Peter. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Pete, yours is Barmanu. Barmanu. B-A-R-M-A-N-O-U. Barmanu. Okay. Is a, is a purported bipedal humanoid primate alleged to inhabit the mountainous regions of western Pakistan. Barmanu. Barmanu. Let's see. I used to date a girl like that. Um, <laughs> Barmanu. Uh, Barmaid? Or, bar, or she was from Pakistan? Or bipedal? Do you, you, really do you date bipedal girls now? What, I'm what are you pretty doing? sure she was bipedal. Uh, <laughs> you it wasn't that word. I did not however. think it means what you think it means. <laughs> All right. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. Mike, she was tripedal, I think. Uh, well, no. <clears throat> anyway, so Mike, I'm gonna yeah. say, I'm gonna say that is a uh, uh, that's a town. That's a town. Yeah. Uh, what do you what do you say? Uh, what, what do you say, Ben? Uh, it sounds vaguely familiar. I. I think it's probably a cryptid, but it, is a cryptid. it, it could go either way. It is a uh, cryptid. Don't doubt right. yourself, Ben. Come on, man. You are, you you are the f- foremost person. You're you're not like Lauren Coleman, are you? I'm not like Lauren. I uh, uh, I mean, I, some of these I got from him, just so you know. Yes. That's, that's how that's how low I scraped the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> All right. So uh, duly noted. Ben, here is your next one. We're on number five. We have uh, two more each for you after this. One, okay. Two. One, two. Yeah, two more each. So here we go. Uh, Ben, uh, this is uh, uh, Minhoko. Minhoko or cow. I'm not sure if it's Minhoko. You know that little uh, M-I-N-H-A-C with the A with the little... uh, Oh, yeah, the tilde, yeah. A-O. I think that's that's usually either Portuguese or uh, or Brazilian. Anyway, this, this... is a creature from Brazilian folklore uh, that is claimed to be a large fish or to resemble a worm measuring 100 to 150 feet. Pete, you may know it as the Alaskan bullworm. Okay. The whole <laughs> the whole thing. thing. The whole yeah. thing. Favorite SpongeBob episode ever. Ever. <laughs> That's why I had to drop that. So, okay. Uh, yeah. So, Ben, ben uh, Min... Ha Minhoko Minhoko. How, uh, I think that's a cryptid. I, that, that's not, that I, that's plausible to me. Now it's interesting that you would say that it's a cryptid, because it is in fact a cryptid. Woo! All right. All right. Redeeming myself. All right. And uh, Pete, here's your here's your next to last one. Pete, yours is Arzamas. Arzamas, a winged cryptid rumored to inhabit the Thai highlands. It has never been seen in flight, but claimed to be responsible for infecting pig stock. Pig stock. You know, I like to make soup with pig stock. Not um, infected pig stock. <laughs> especially not infected pig stock. Postular pig stock. From an right. Ours the mass. <laughs> right. How else am I gonna get swine flu? Um when death is on the line. I mean, never use infected pig stock. All right, I'm gonna go uh I'm gonna say I'm gonna say that's a creature. That's a critter. If you were to say that that is a creature, unfortunately you would be wrong because ah. it is actually a Russian city located on the Tyosha River, two hundred and fifty miles east of Moscow, with a population of a hundred and six thousand three hundred and sixty two. The Russians again. Uh, they got you, Pete. They got oh, you, man. Bam. All Just right. like an election. <clears throat> Mike is all sorry. over this, man. All right. I'm, I did, dude, I came home and I had to, I had to rewrite the whole game. <laughs> Go ahead, Mike. Come on. Let's finish okay. this up. Hey, two more. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just one each. One each. Okay, Ben, here's yours. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm going to see if I can pronounce this to make it sound credible either way. <clears throat> In one shot. Luan Shaya. Luan Shaya, L-U-A-N-S-H-Y-A, Luan Shaya or Luan Shia. How about okay. Luan Shia? Let's go with that. Uh, this is a three feet tall, hairless biped reported to constant, reported consistently from the forests of South America. Well, I've I've been to the forest in South America looking for small creatures, uh, dwarves and others, including the duende, um, which are this st- sort of a the stone throwing version of of uh, of the, the the fairies in in South American folklore. Dwarfs. Um, but I've not heard that. Now, of course, you know I I, I don't know everything. I'm the first to say that. Um, my spidey sense tells me it is a town. Well, if your spidey sense tells you it's a town, you listen to that goddamn spidey sense, buddy, because it's a town in Zambia. It's in the Copper Belt province near Ndola, 
It is uh, has a population of 117,000 since the 2008 nice. census. And nice. it's also it's very close to Umlaut. It's just down just a couple of kilometers down the road from Umlaut. Well, well there you have it. Uh, Pete, uh, we have one last one to go. What is the score? Do you have a chance? <laughs> no. Uh, ben has three. I have one. But let's see if I can suck a little less. All right. All right. You know what? It's all about sucking less. Okay, <laughs> Pete, your last one is Almas. Or Almas or Almas or Almas, whatever. Uh, either way, however the hell you want to pronounce it, that was my biggest problem in this. Uh, even the people on, on uh, YouTube didn't want to know how to pronounce these things. Okay. I went through like 10 minutes of video, and the guy goes, I don't know how it's pronounced. I'm like, ah! Huge hairy Neanderthal or Homo erectus like hominoids mm. sighted in various parts of Euro Asia. I think I've heard of this one before, so I, th I you know, but I'm. <laughs> could have heard of it as a town but I th it sounds familiar uh and i I, th I think that's true i think it's a big big hairy ape like thing so you don't think it's almas euro asia area code uh zero one four four two one four yeah, fuck out. No, not, i don't know okay I all right no you are you are correct i'm not even going to screw with you here are right, yeah, you you are right because you, you you put your nickel down and, and you you got to return very good Fantastic. very good pete so listen uh i don't think you did half bad buddy you know no, you're you do, a, right you're a winner in my book. Right. I mean, hey, you went I up went against the world, one yeah. of the world's foremost experts and still came in close. Right. But, Mike, we have a winner. And, and Ben, winner yet? This is, you, you won three to two, and you get this is your prize. So enjoy it. <laughs> it's all it's we have to moment. offer here. It's your moment to shine. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. It's all we man. have to offer. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's uh, better than a spot on coast to coast. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we had so much fun with uh, Ben, and we're going to have to have him back, and he's promised to come back because we have much, much more to, to uh, cover. Uh, that being said, please, please, please go to, if you need, need to know anything um, Benjamin Rad Radford uh, related, please go to BenjaminRadford.com B-E-N-J-A-M-I-N R-A-D-F-O-R-D.com uh, and you can pretty much find any and everything you need to get to. However, uh, we also highly recommend that you go to Ben's podcast, uh, Squaring the Strange. I'm getting there, I'm getting there, Ben, I'm getting there. Yes. Let's get very strange first. Uh, he brings evidence-based analysis and commentary to a wide variety of topics ranging from the paranormal to the political. And yes, I think I'm going to add the parapolitical or maybe the crypto-political. Crypto-political, uh, I like it. Yes. You, you, I'm giving you that one. I always give our guests a little, little hey, Mike, party gift. I think that's where we are right now. We're in the yes. crypto political world. Anyway, sorry, go ahead. No, sorry, sorry. <laughs> it's the age, the crypto political age. Yes. <laughs> All right. So find out more about that at uh, Squaring the Strange uh, at Lisbon.com or just if you type in Squaring the Strange, you will find it. Now, Ben has a blog and he writes uh, through the Center for Inquiry uh, that is called A Skeptic Reads the Newspaper. And uh, you could go, just go to the uh, Center for Inquiry, and you could find – I could give you this weird uh, long um, link URL. URL. Or I could do – again, I, I've given you a gift, Ben. I made you a bit.ly link that is literally oh, cool. bit.ly forward slash all uppercase, a skeptic reads the newspaper. <laughs> well, that's cool. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So please go to – a skeptic reads the newspaper at a, a, a bitly link near you, uh, and you are uh, you are sure to not be uh, disappointed. So, um, and we were going to have you back, and we're going to definitely talk more about your game, and we're going to talk crop circles uh, for Mama Marsh. And uh, I just minute, I, I can't hold, hold up them enough. sexy books again. Oh yeah, and hold up them sexy books. Because... All right, so yeah, I've got I've got I've got ten books. I've won awards for a couple of them. Uh, I've done books on evil clowns, on chupacabras, on ghosts, all sorts of weird shit like that. Um, and yeah, like we mentioned earlier, I've did, we've done the, the puzzle, the fold and find with Celestial Ward. We got the podcast, Squaring the Strange, the bloggers. I'm all over the place. I don't even know where I am right now. Right. You've, you've won awards. Like, uh, tracking the Chupacabra has actually won, like, you know, a, a major award and not just a leg lamp, right? Yeah, it, yeah, I, I was a winner for book awards and uh, I think I've won three, 
three or four book awards the last couple of years, which, you know, it's, it's not the national awards or anything, but it's, it's, you know, respectable it's, ones. So. It's respectable. And uh, scientific paranormal investigation, how to solve unexplained mysteries and investigating ghosts, the scientific search for spirits. Now, all of these links will be in our show notes. Uh, and we will be pimping these on our various um, means of social media, uh, including, and follow me, please, at uh, M-I-K-E-K-A-F-E-S at uh, Twitter.com or at Twitter and at uh, MythWits at Twitter. And uh, find us on Facebook. All right. Definitely. Well, thanks, Ben, for coming on. We really appreciate it. And we're going to definitely have you back Uh you know, we'll do uh, we'll do something in a, probably in a couple months. We got a, we got a couple things lined up. Um, yeah, and I don't like to keep the same kind of shows too tight together. So yeah, sure. I'm thinking sometime in like June. We'll we'll set something right up. before yeah, June. But yeah, take I'll be happy June. to. No, I had a blast, and you know, Thanks. again, I'm happy to chat about anything from you know, urban legends. I mean, we we could go on for hours about all sorts of uh, stuff and. And uh, clothespins, as you mentioned, I have a clothespin collection, which most people don't know about. So we're, you, you, we're gonna have you back on just time, for that. Right. Next time, you're gonna have some of those ready to show us, and we're gonna talk. I about promise them. I will. All right. I promise awesome. I will. That's awesome. All right, Pete, roll the bean footage. All right, y'all. Here we go. You've just enjoyed another awesome episode of The Mythwits, and this one really was. I know I say that every week, but this one was fantastic. If you don't have time for videos, make sure to subscribe to our podcast via your favorite podcatcher. Do the like, follow, subscribe thing wherever it's appropriate. And make sure to share your favorite episode on social media, like this one would be good, uh, to help spread Mythwits love over the entire planet. Tweet us at Mythwits and check out Mythwits.com. Mythwits is produced by Aetherforge Creations as part of the TSR Podcast Network. Check out TSRPN.com and AetherForge.com for more cool stuff. Let me tell you, that TSR pin, P TSRPN, uh, the podcast network is fantastic, Mike. Lots of good shows. I uh, love it. Especially, especially the Game School. Spence oh, was, was watching say, tonight. I going to say this show, but yeah, Game School is pretty cool, too. <laughs> yes. Mythwits is a Creative Commons product. Like and share it in all the places. Just don't edit it, don't sell it, and don't misidentify it as in Chupacabra. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Tell your friends to tune in. And until next week, Mike. You feel that? That's, that's ghost cold. <laughs>